All right, this next pro tip is incredibly important for anyone who works with pivot tables in Excel. We're gonna talk about the pivot table cache and specifically how that cache can be used to both remove and revive your pivot table source data. Now, what most users don't realize is that anytime you insert a new pivot table, a pivot cache is generated as well. So think of that pivot cache as essentially a compressed duplicate copy of your source data that lives out of sight behind the scenes. Now, this cache is incredibly important because what it allows you to do is actually delete your original source data without actually impacting the pivot itself. And that sounds crazy. You can actually delete the table or cell range that you used to create a pivot and continue to use that pivot just like you normally would. You can modify your table layouts, your row and column labels, add slicers and pivot charts, all because you're now working off of the data in cache. And there are a couple reasons why you might want to do this, one of which is to significantly reduce your file sizes, especially if you're dealing with large tables that don't need to be refreshed or updated over time. So to make this work, we need to adjust some very specific settings. Now, let's say we have a basic pivot table like this. For this demo, we're going to be looking at San Francisco salaries. So we're looking at the average base pay for 2011, 2012, and the grand total overall. And if we drill into our pivot table tools and our options menu and look at the data tab, you'll see three different options here in the pivot table data menu. And we'll want to check the first two boxes here. The first one, save source data with files, ensures that that pivot table cache gets saved with your workbook. Second, enable show details. This is basically your lifeline in case you need that source data back. Because what it allows you to do is double click any unfiltered grand total cell in the pivot, like this one, and it recreates the entire source table from scratch, from cache, in a brand new worksheet. I'm going to show you exactly what this looks like in Excel, but obviously very, very powerful, very useful tool to keep in mind. Now, as far as common use cases, there are two that come to mind. First, like I mentioned, removing static source data to reduce your file size or increase your processing speed. And second, it's a great way to limit accessibility in order to prevent users from actually accessing or changing the raw data itself while still allowing them to explore or analyze that data through the pivot table interface. So let's jump into our pro tip workbook. I'm going to show you exactly how this pivot table cache works. All right, so if you feel like following along, open up your pro tip workbook, head to your table of contents, and we're going to drill right into the removing and reviving data demo, that four star demo in our gray pivot table tip section. Click link. And what you'll find is a table of data Tables called San Fran salaries. We've got employee names by year with their job title and two metrics that we're working with here, base pay and overtime pay. And if I just use the control arrow down shortcut to jump to the bottom, I can see that we've got just over 16,000 rows or observations of data here, 16,085. Now keep that number in the back of your mind because we're actually gonna to return to that number in just a bit. So it's not a huge amount of data, but it's considerable. It's enough to kind of save some file size if I were able to kind of clear this out. So the idea here is to create a pivot based on this source data and then get rid of the table itself so that we can just work from cache and reduce our file size. So with any cell here in the table selected, we can go into insert, pivot, drop it into a new worksheet, and let's just name it something meaningful double click, maybe it's San Fran pivot. There we go. Let's just kind of create a basic view here, pull a year into filters, maybe job titles on rows, base pay on values, and let's show those as an average here. Looks good. And uh, why don't we filter down to just 2012? All right, so we've got a good starting point here, basic pivot table layout. Don't worry too much about the details. What we really need to make sure is that our settings are specified in a way that will allow us to remove or delete that actual source table. So let's go into pivot table tools, options, drill into the data tab. And these three checkboxes are the ones we care about right now. Number one, save the source data with file. 
check that box because yes, we want the cache to be saved with this workbook. Number two, enable show details. Check that box because yes, that's our lifeline in case we need to get our source data back. And then this third box, refresh data when opening the file. That one you don't need to check because refreshing the data won't be possible once we delete this source table because Excel is not going to be able to find the table or range of cells from which this pivot was created. So it won't have anything to refresh. In fact, if you've tried to refresh some of the other pivots throughout this course, you may have gotten an invalid reference error. And that's exactly what you'll see here, because what I've done is strip out all of the source data to reduce the file size for this project workbook. So let's go ahead and press OK here. Our settings look good. Now watch this, we go to our actual source data, we can right click the tab and delete the entire tab containing that whole table of data. When we jump back to San Fran pivot, check it out. Maybe we don't want 2012 data, maybe we want 2011. Boom, looks good. Let's pull in overtime pay as well. Let's view it as an average, not a sum. Looks good. And then, hey, instead of job titles, let's pull those into filters and actually bring in employee name from our field list. There we go. So as you can see, we're able to modify and play with and adjust this pivot exactly like we would if our source data still existed. But our tab is gone. It's been completely deleted. And that's why it's so powerful to work off of cache when you're dealing with static tables like this. Now, keep in mind, if we went to pivot table tools, tried to refresh, here's that error that we're getting. The reference isn't valid because Excel can't find that San Fran salaries table anymore. And that's okay because what we can do here is clear any filters that we have like this, or you can actually go into the clear option and say clear any filters. And it doesn't even matter what our field list looks like, what values are in here, what we're looking at for row or column labels. All we need to do is jump down to any grand total cell either B15718 or C, and double click. And watch what happens. We created a new sheet. In my case, it's called Sheet 12. And it includes all of that source data, the name, the year, the job title, the base pay and the overtime pay. And check it out. If we scroll all the way to the bottom, 16,085. So we've revived all of that source data using that show details double click feature. So from here, maybe we add some new calculated columns, maybe we stack in some data that we need, we can refresh our pivot now that our table exists again, and then go ahead and delete it once more. So obviously an incredibly powerful tool and one that a lot of Excel users really aren't quite comfortable working with. So there you have it. That's your crash course on the pivot table cache and how it can be used to actually delete and then revive your source data.